This is a short video just going through how to record a lecture using PowerPoint. So open your slides in PowerPoint and then go to slideshow and go to record slideshow from beginning. Hopefully it shows you this interface. Um, if not, you might have a different version of PowerPoint. This is Office 365 PowerPoint. You'll notice down the bottom, you've got the option to turn on the video camera. We recommend you do this so that students can um, get an idea of who you are, who's delivering their lecture, and also just associate that material with a person, making it sort of easier to engage with, easier to remember, and easier to retain. Um, it's, it's much more engaging if they know the person who's delivering the material. So once you've got that set up, and you might just do that for the first couple of slides and the last slide, you don't necessarily have to have it on for the whole time. Um, anyway, you get your um, notes down if you want to have your notes on as well and you can see there's some settings over here which is where you choose uh, your microphone and your camera. And then it's pretty simple, you just click the record button. Okay, so I'm recording my lecture now and I can record some audio and video if I'm going to for each slide and then I can go through to the next slide and I've got a nice chart here plotting the coronavirus trajectory. You can see where Australia sits at the moment, um, somewhere in the middle. And you can walk through your slides like this, obviously. Um, it's nice to have some images in your slides. You can um, pause the recording. So if I click pause here, I can turn off the camera preview so that I don't see myself if I like. I can keep recording and go to the next slide, talking about social distancing and um, some news reporting. And then I'm going to click stop. And what I'm going to do is close out of my recording. And you'll see what it's done is basically it's added a little audio and video recording to each slide. So if I want to go back and edit one slide, all I have to do is go back to that slide record slideshow from the current slide and it will replace that recording. So I can move this around if it's covering something up. Um, I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. Okay, so once you've recorded that video, you can basically edit it as if it was a video in your PowerPoint. Um, which makes it really easy just to fix one slide if something changes. If you keep your PowerPoint and you need to update something, you can do that really easily. Once you're happy with that, and so what I might do just to make this a bit of a smaller size is, I'll just have three slides. So once you're happy with your lecture recording, uh, you can go to File. And what we're going to do is go save a copy as. And what we want to do is save it as a video. So instead of um, saving it as a PowerPoint presentation, we want to choose MP4. So I'm going to select MP4 and save that. And you'll see what it's doing down here is giving you a little bit of a progress update. It might take a while because it's creating a video. Okay, so that's finished now. So what I'm going to do is navigate and just check that. Okay, so here's where I saved that document. You can see it is quite a large file, but video lectures, they're always gonna be large. Um, my uni will process that and convert it to a format that's really easily watchable by students. So we can just check that by double clicking it. So you can see that's playing back nicely. 
So now I've got that MP4, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to put it into my uni. So I'm going to go into my uni, log in, navigate to the course that you want. So I'm going to put it in my SAMPIC course for now. And the area we want to put it into is Echo360. So we go into Echo360. And this Echo3, Echo icon is actually a menu. So my content. Um, what I'm going to do is upload that file. So click the upload button, select the file to upload. Click the upload button. And you can see now my lecture is in there. It's not available to students. It's actually just in my library at the moment. So then I can, if I want to make it available, I click that link again and it will show me all the um, recordings that are currently in that course. So if I want to add a new one, it's called a class. So we will say this, this is week two. User naming convention because it makes it much easier for the students if everybody follows the same pattern when they're naming these files. We'll say OK. So I've created an item and then I'm going to add a video to that item from my library. Find the one I just did, which I think was that one. And then that's there. You can also add the slides because um, the students can sometimes find that really useful if they just have the slides without the video too. Um, and then that's available to the students and they can click on that and play it back.